in the previous figure on crossing over, I mentioned there were two ways that meiosis can generate genetic diversity. The first was through crossing over, as we discussed, and the second is through what's called independent assortment. So you think about what happens in meiosis is the maternal and paternal chromosomes are assorted, they're separated into uh, the daughter cells of meiosis one. And there are two ways that this can happen. And this is just being illustrated using a total of four chromosomes. But remember, in humans, there would be 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. Now, one side note to mention, the X and Y chromosome are not truly homologous, but there's a region uh, of the X and the Y that's called the pseudo autosomal region. And that's what allows the X and Y to pair together during meiosis, even though they're not truly um, homologous. So with that side note, let's take a look at what happens. So let's say the uh, blue color represents the mom, the red color represents the dad. So these are the maternal chromosomes, these are the paternal chromosomes. So what happens in meiosis one is homologous chromosomes pair, then the pairs line up along the equator of the cell. In metaphase of meiosis one, this is what it would look like, right? Pairs of homologous chromosomes synapsed and aligned along the equator. In this particular case, what has happened is both of the maternal Homolo both of the maternal chromosomes are on one side and both paternal chromosomes of the two homologous pairs are on the other side. So when these separate, it means both of the maternal chromosomes will go one direction, both of the paternal will go the other way, and these are the types of gametes that would be produced. If, because, or let me phrase it this way, because the way they line up in the middle is independent or random, then it's equally possible that I could have uh, a maternal chromosome for the first homologous pair and the paternal chromosome for the second homologous pair align, and then vice versa for this pair. So that during separation in anaphase of meiosis one, the maternal member of the first homologous pair and the paternal member of the second homologous pair would segregate together, whereas the paternal member of the first pair and the uh, maternal member of the second pair segregate. And you can see that's going to give differences. Now, assuming there were genetic differences between the homologous chromosomes, meaning they didn't have the same alleles, then this would produce the potential for genetic diversity. Okay, um, And so that's one of the ways that you can get diversity without even having crossing over. So think about this. The probability of the paternal chromosome going one direction uh, for each chromosome pair is one half. So if humans have 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes, then it would be one half or 50% raised to the 23rd power, which is I think about eight million, a little over eight million. So the probability that all of mom's homolog or mom's members of the homologous pairs would end up in one daughter cell of meiosis one is uh, less than one in eight million. And then if you add crossing over into that situation, the probability of getting two gametes with the same genetic makeup is incredibly small. And then even if you did have that situation, the probability that uh, two identical sperm and eggs would be created and then fused with each other is online with statistically impossible. Again, assuming there's genetic diversity there to begin with. If there's no genetic diversity, then crossing over and independent assortment aren't gonna give you any diversity. So for highly inbred lines of mice, for example, that have been inbred or, or mating between relatives for multiple generations, there is no diversity. In other words, you have meiosis happen, but all of the gametes for all intents and purposes are genetically identical to each other. So that's why inbred lines of mice are a useful research tool when you're trying to determine the effects of a particular drug, for example, because you've taken genetic diversity out of the response. And so it gives you a more controlled experimental design to work within.